This is Bill Doyle and Vermont Issues. And it, introduce yourself, uh, Sophie. Um, Sophie Bettman Kirsten. And Bill and I are here to discuss our new book. You're an editor. A Lasting Impression, which comes from Bill's long studies of Vermont and the people of Vermont. And so we're very, very lucky to have the information, the story, and the storyteller all in one place. And I want to just note that the book review that you wrote about this book has um, a wonderful concept behind it, which is that the Constitution of the state of Vermont sort of gave you um, a broad sense of ability with this book, and you've taken it right to town, in my opinion. There's a great amount of information in here. So I'll just read the first sentence, because it says a lot. The purpose of our book is to leave a lasting impression about Vermonter's inherent strength and independence. So uh, that's something that's beautiful about Vermont. It's, it requires us to be strong and independent. And um, do you want to say a few words about Vermont's Constitution? Well, I think the Vermont Constitution, Sophie, is uh, a, a, an amazing document and sets the table for what goes on in Vermont history. Because early on, we, in our Constitution, said that slavery is outlawed. Mm -hmm. And that determined our position in the Civil War, uh, how our people who fought in the war responded, and the people who live here. And and so um, the, I'm, I'm struck as, as a Vermonter, and I think it's, it's the Vermont towns are the, the heart of our state. I mean, it's, the town government is very important. The town meeting is important for two, the 250 towns that we have in Vermont. Just passed a few weeks ago. But I'm, I'm going to mention a few towns that are in the book, the uh, Middlesex, uh, known as Bear Town because of the number of bears. Uh, I love that. More Town, Worcester, Waterbury, the home of three governors. Uh, Berlin, the home to heroes. Uh, Bennington, uh, and all of, all of the towns are important, but I'm just mentioning some that have been mentioned in the book. Uh, Barry and Montpelier, Washington County, and uh, East Montpelier didn't mention. And the special events that we have is the, the Flag Day and the, so. So do you have any general observations about the town meetings? from these towns? I mean, you you are the creator and the purveyor of our famous Doyle survey, which has been a, it's been a stronghold in my whole life here. And um, I'm sure you've gained huge wealth of knowledge out of that conversation with the specific towns. Do you have general observations well, that general you've come out with? It, it's a, it's a a real addition to democracy in action, and not all all states in in our nation have the town meeting concept. It's so important that as a teacher, I encourage my students to go to the town meeting questionnaire and, and write a, a report on the town meeting. And uh, and so that's why I've listed uh, in this book. I've listed several towns, but I can't get them all in. But I, Middlesex and Moortown, Worcester, Waterbury, Berlin, Bennington, Warren, uh, Wastefield, Northfield, uh, Duxbury. Uh, so where do you come up with the questions? Are they questions that people ask you or things that you hear in well, let's, legislative well, conversation? Let's start with the Vermont General Assembly. And I might say okay. that when we talk about the Vermont General Assembly having served uh, a significant amount of time in the, in the legislature. I'll go on record and say it's one of the best legislatures in the nation, and I've traveled all over the, this country and gone to at least 20 or 30 legislators attended what they were doing. And I would say that the, the Vermont legislature ranks very high in, in as a uh, debating, to debate the great issues, and, and 
the legislature helps bring forward leaders that often would become our uh, state officials, like the governor and lieutenant governor, and uh, U.S. senators, and so on. So, the, I want to make sure we pay tribute to, to our towns, and we pay tribute to the Vermont legislature, which I think is one of the best in the nation, as I've said. And the towns I've enumerated because I think that I, I couldn't, couldn't, didn't want to read out 250 towns, but I want to name, name some of the towns that are in this book so that the reader will have some sense of what what's, what's the, the book is about. And, uh, and the, the significance of, the, of our Vermont Constitution uh, with slavery right from the beginning. 1776, uh, slavery is outlawed. And that sets the table for how Vermonters feel about the Civil War and many of the events. The importance of the individual uh, is borne out in our Constitution. I think it's one of the best constitutions. It's recognized as one of the best and shortest since Constitution in our country. Hmm. Was it used as a model for other states? Uh, I think it, it for for many states. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So you have seen everyone's comments for years on the in these surveys, and are there um, important comments and opinions that have changed your perspective or made things come forward for you in a way that um, you were able to? work with the community to change situations? No, in addition to some of the, the, the questions on the questionnaire about uh, water quality and, and uh, population and uh, family leave and questions of that sort, uh, I think just as significant as the results. And I might just say, since I mentioned the question, I'll just say a couple of words about each the opioid crisis is 90% uh, of Vermonters uh, are deeply concerned about it. Water quality is very important. Uh, great support for the, increasing the minimum wage. Uh, most Vermonters don't think that Vermont's an affordable state in which to live. Uh, you hear that a lot, I think. We do, and, and, that, and, and we get that in comments by the, and those comments that we get in addition to the opinions are put in the book because I said I want the people who I wrote them to have, have a recognition. We don't do it by name, but we do by by, by common quote, by quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, the four-year term for governor, the bottle deposit, uh, the ranking of uh, governor Scott. Now, four-year term for governor. This has been a long-term question, right? And the bottle law as well, right? Yes. I mean, some of these questions have been on here for. A, quite some time, right? And have you seen traction with them? Well, the bottle deposit is very popular. In mm -hmm. fact, people wrote me and said, make sure, we know you've asked the question about bottle deposit. Would you put the, the question in on bottle deposit? Put it on again. <laughs> Would you do it again? And I, honored, I honored that. That's neat. So, do so you... On the four-year term that you mentioned, Sophie, is, is, is the fact that well, there are only two, two states in, in the nation that have a two-year term. Oh. And the argument for the four-year term that if you're dealing with profound issues, difficult issues, and you're asking 200 people in our say in Vermont to make comments on these, and, and the, the four-year term uh, would give the governor more time if some of the issues are extremely different and can't be accomplished in a two-year term. Mm -hmm. And so the the uh, the four-year term is to give the governor an opportunity, the, the, the time to marshal support for something that is extremely important. And, and most gov most governors have an agenda when they're elected, and I think that we should give a governor a four-year term to, to to make sure that that agenda. He has a chance to make sure that what he uh, what he said he'd do when he when he or she won, won the governorship uh, for them to have time to carry out their, their program. So today it's a, 
it's a tricky day for Governor Scott, right? I mean, he's in a situation where some people would consider him a liar, right? Because he's a gun supporter, but he also is a father and supports safety in a learning environment, and I, I can't blame him for that. Do you believe that Governor Scott's doing a good job in his first couple of months here? Well, let me say something about Phil Scott in the beginning. He's, I knew him as a legislator, uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> as a lieutenant governor, and as a governor and who takes positions thoughtfully and, and calls them as he sees them. So I'm, I, I definitely think that uh, Governor Scott is, is, uh, has done a good job. I know he's under fire because of the position and the gun issue, but it's an issue that he, he uh, spoke out on. Uh, uh, a lot of governors would not even have ma made any comments and gone on the record about mm. guns, but I think I, I think he's done a good job. So should Vermont have paid family sick, sick leave? Yes, that, that's a very popular, and that, that's another question that I put in because of demand and family. Families obviously pretty crucial. Well, and that's a that's a sort of a hidden point when you're sick. You're not going to the state house to rally. And if you want, if you want to encourage people to to live in your state, yeah, you pass laws that respect families and that families have difficult times in in getting on uh, financially, and and so uh, yes, I think that that's a very popular. And again, that was by request. Uh huh. Does Vermont rely too heavily on property taxes for funding education? Uh, the answer overwhelmingly is yes, and. Uh, it's yes because uh, the uh, the taxes are high, and as I read all the comments, that's the most frequent comment, Sophie, is that uh, taxes so high leads some to myself. I'm going to leave the state because of that. So many people said I'm going to leave the state because of high taxes, and so I think the uh, <clears throat> one of the key issues of the legislature this past session and the past ones is to be aware of that. And I think uh, efforts were made during the recent legislative and, and past legislative sessions to try to keep property taxes under control because if it's if property taxes are going to keep uh, we're going to lose people because of property taxes losing people is not a good way to conduct a state. Yeah, well, right. Our GDP hasn't changed in 30 years, 25, 30 years. That's right. <laughs> I'm all right about it. You know. Probably some people aren't. <laughs> That's good. That's what it's all about. Are you satisfied with Vermont's health care? Uh, generally speaking, uh, uh, most people most people think we could do better. Hmm. That, that's, that's the sum and substance of the survey on health. Okay. Are you optimistic about Vermont's economy? Uh, again, it's a, it's a, a question. and. Uh, most people are, are worried about whether whether our economy uh, is, is functioning as well as it could. It, and, and we're in competition with 49 other states. Mm. I have to say, though, in my opinion, Vermonters have always been so self-sufficient. I think sometimes our economy boots them out of the cycle because they're not part of a corporation. And then that that, I wish there was some way to make that more economically viable for Vermonters? Because I think people have the ability, yeah. right? I mean, anyway. No, just to carry on your thought, yeah. the next year I'll, I'll put in a question like that that conveys your thought. Excellent. Thank you. Do you believe that Vermont values are a reason that many people choose to live in Vermont? Yeah, and most Vermonters believe that they're here uh, because they believe in, in the, the Vermont values. Uh, of, of, of good government and participation, and uh, some, there are a lot of people who affirmatively have lived in states which they like to squish states, but they've never had a chance to participate as much as in Vermont. Vermont is a participatory state, and that's, that's the town getting back to town meeting again. I think you're so true. That's so a I, great line. So I think the Vermont the Vermont town meeting is a, gives a Vermont has a chance to participate in their town meeting, participate in their government, and I know a lot of people, because of that participation, choose 
to live in Vermont. To stay. Yeah. Hmm. Was that the case with you? Uh, it was one of the contributing. It said, well, first the case was that it, uh, the first case was that it offered you to have a job in Vermont. Hmm. That was that was very much very important. And, and getting a job in Vermont, it was in part because I knew in advance, I'd known enough about Vermonters, seen them at, perform in other states, and, and have a great admiration not only for Vermonters as individuals, but as, as a, the Vermont legislature and the town meetings. And uh, I, th I'm, I'm, I think very, Vermont does well. I rank, give Vermont high grades on local and state government. Okay. Uh, next question, should we reduce Vermont's prison population by using alternatives for nonviolent offenders? Well, there, there are people who, uh, and, and the result is most, most Vermonters think that nonviolent offenders should have, uh, be given more consideration than who are violent, obviously. Hmm. And I think that the, the legislation, it's, it's, uh, our legislature takes that into consideration and, and, uh, and I think uh, I'm pleased with the way the, the legislature deals with that issue. And, and I think it's a good idea. Ah, me too. Are you satisfied with the quality of education in your local school district? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm very, as a former school board member and a chair of a school board in, in Montpelier, uh, I, I think that our local boards perform very well, and I, it's a thankless task. There's just virtually no compensation, maybe one or two hundred dollars a week, mm -hmm. something. But to, to be able to serve on a school board gives it an investment of time and effort, and I publicly give credit to anybody that serves on a Vermont school board. And I think it's, it's again, it's part of it's part of our process and governmental process, and uh, I rank. Uh, uh, Vermont school boards, the work that it's done, our school boards perform well. So I just want to show off, this is the Doyle poll from um, 2018. It's known as the Doyle poll, but we prefer to call it the Doyle survey. Yes, I do. It, it's just, it is a survey, not a scientific poll, it's a survey. And I just want to show you, this is the the collection of Bill's surveys starting in 1969 when he started, you know, taking the pulse of central Vermont. Uh, Vermont, I did even then back, it was all of Vermont. All of Vermont. All of Vermont, starting in 1969. Mm -hmm. So this was the 50th anniversary oh, of it, right? <laughs> so that was Thank kind you, of a big deal. That, well, so half of this book is a study of that work of um, the outcomes of the surveys over the years, the changing of the questions, and the sentiment, and the outcome for the state. And um, I have to say, Bill, this is one of, I think, the most innovative ways that you could come across to really understand you know, how your community feels about things. And I am very grateful to you personally for thinking of all of our opinions. Well, you do mention just opinions a minute ago. It, it has to do with opinions, and many of the most important opinions, which I put in the book, are, are uh, uh, come from the, the people who fill out the forms. Mm. So, uh, you know, the, the survey would be less important if we didn't have the wonderful comments that uh, people write in their own views on, on, on various topics. Mm. Some topics I don't know about. Oh, right. I'm sure you've gotten a bit of education yourself on this project. It's, it's truly been an education. Huh. So um, I have a couple of other questions. Do you, um, you want to discuss the importance of those comments and opinions a little bit? I mean, like, are there ones that really changed your mind about your vote, or were there points in the survey where you sort of readjusted your take on things? Well, it, it, it does um, influence my take on things, as you point out. But uh, 
<clears throat> obviously, it depend, depends on the question. You can imagine the first question, the opioid crisis, many, many comments on that. A deep concern. Uh, water quality is uh, worthy of uh, many comments. Uh, the minimum wage gets support in Vermont in the survey. Uh, most people don't think Vermont is an affordable place to live. Mm. Uh, uh, many Vermonters express concern about the decrease in Vermont's population. Uh, I've already talked about the four-year term for governor. Uh, that's probably not going to happen right away, but sometime, some, in some years, uh, Vermont will have a four-year term. Every state in, in, in the nation but two, New Hampshire and Vermont, have a four-year term for governor. Uh, the bottle deposit was uh, a very uh, greatly supported and by comments. We already talked about Governor Scott. Paid family leave, we've discussed that already. The, do too heavily, do we rely on too heavily on property tax? We've discussed that already today. Uh, uh, the Vermont's economy is. Uh, uh, the returns, the survey returns are lukewarm on the Vermont's economy. We could do better. Uh, we talked about Vermont values is the reason why people choose to live in Vermont. People, that's a very good, strong support, and deservedly so. Uh, we already talked about the prison population by using alternatives for nonviolent offenders and. Uh, are you satisfied with the quality of education in your local school? I think that most people are satisfied with the quality of education. You'll get uh, each, every town will have a different opinion, their own opinion, and they, as they should. But I think in general, uh, uh, Vermonters try to work for quality of education and can be proud of some of the, many of the school boards. Now, you wanted to talk about um, apportionment a little bit. Does that come in with that part of the budget, <laughs> education? Well, I mean, is that? Well, the, uh, I've served on committees that did do the apportionment, and uh, it's, an, it's an extremely important, well, government operations is an extremely important committee, and apportionment is, is one of the keys things we do on that committee. So. Uh, Obviously, uh, apportionment is all about fairness and giving equality to each individual. If you give certain segments of influence uh, in a particularly uh, a town or a, a county or a nation, I mean, I must say that um, that Congress itself is is. Uh, could, it's a major issue for Congress when they, when, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a very key issue whether you have um, and your and the influence that you have as a state. So, uh, as a committee, our committee felt that no issue is more important than was apportioned because you have to treat individual individuals fairly and with equality. And there, and I'd hate to say I hate to say it, but there are many states. Uh, don't exactly do that. But you believe Vermont does? I think Vermont tries to do that. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, all states gr grapple with apportionment, and, and it's, it's, a quite a, it's a matter of fairness and being fair to eat and treating, treating people equally. Uh, Vermont, uh, one thing I will say that it was, it was uh, I think it's on the top of Vermont's agenda. I think at this point, right, with the economy so odd and things like with the opiate and depression and all that stuff being so rampant, I think, yeah, I think apportionment's really key in this particular time. Well, uh, Do you think I, local government is able to affect that in through your survey, being I, vocal I, about what is important to them? Or I think on, on the question of... Uh, Apportionment, treating people equally, is a key idea. And as in Vermont, I think we treat people and, and the, the equality of people extremely important. And I think that we've, 
and, and there are federal laws that you can't uh, have drastically out of out of the loop apportionment plans because you'd, that'd be just, that'd be a, res, a court in the Supreme Court you could lose the Supreme Court and the, and actually <clears throat> the Supreme Court just recently has uh, thrown out many laws passed by states because they haven't uh, counted people equally and so it's that's, that's why I asked the question I, I give I give them on high grades on on, on the apportionment issue and, and it was when, on the committee that uh, deals with apportionment, takes it very seriously, and it's a very important committee, and I'm very proud of them. So do you think Vermont, by not doing a lot of gerrymandering, we're, we're making the apportionment more accessible for ourselves? Or do you think, like states that are dealing with that, do you think they're like miles ahead, or miles behind us, rather? I think that, that, John, that states that don't uh, Treat people fairly, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, lose out on the process because they, they take it if, if they're cited by the Supreme Court and the laws that they pass are thrown out of. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Congress wants to have laws thrown out that they they passed. It's a, it's a key issue in, in many many states, and I think that no state tries harder. To treat people fairly, and and I think uh, Vermont ranks very highly on on our ability to to deal fairly with the apportionment of people. Hmm. I mean, education's your subject, so I'm sure this has been a really tough one for you, as far as you know, watching from both sides of the table there. Well, the, do uh, you? I was going to ask you though. I I don't. Well, go ahead. Tell me what you're thinking. No, go ahead. You, you asked a question. Well, I was thinking maybe we should talk about some of the heroes in the book, and the people that have come before us that made Vermont what it is already. Why and you, well, the one that I was go ahead. the one I was thinking was um, well, there's the spitting lion. The spitting lion of, of Vermont. Uh, that uh, a person who was a great personality, a, a, a fierce temper, and uh, and again uh, is not treated very well by history. Most but example. an exceptional example. An exceptional example. I mean, he was hired. Should I tell the punchline? Go ahead. He was hired from. Chittenden County Jail to represent New York in Congress. Did I get it right? It did. Uh, <laughs> uh, totally crazy. Uh, 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 go ahead. Well, anyway, there's some really wonderful biographies in this book that sort of show, I think, what you're talking about, this um, strength of people from this area, maybe given by weather and defiance of weather. I'm not sure, but Senator George Aiken was another one that you actually worked with. And maybe you have a comment on him. Well, or there's no person that, that served this nation uh, for whom I have a higher regard than, than George Aiken. Uh, um, to know the person and know the, the depth of his knowledge and the fact that he was as good a legislative as you'd ever find, and and as he said, since he represents Vermont, we obviously want to felt he should be in this book. So we do have a high commendation for George Aiken's work. Now, you've gotten to work with several different Vermont governors, right? And he was the first on that list. Well, of course, he he was never governor, but he he was a. Oh, he wasn't governor. I thought he was governor. Maybe I got it wrong. Go ahead. Aiken? So, do you remember a lesson that you learned from him, or? Just common sense and, and common sense and hard work, and getting out into the country and, and getting to know the people he represents. Mm. No one ever did that any better than George Aiken. Okay. So, really knowing the people. Yeah, getting out and getting to know people. And you took that pretty seriously, huh? I tried. I tried to uh, um, model myself like him in terms of the hard, his hard work in getting out to know people that you represent. Mm. 
And I mean, I followed you in the last campaign round. You were you were serious. There was no backing down. I mean, you were going to get the votes. And so, I mean, back then, I think it was probably harder to communicate with your whole community, right? He didn't have a survey or. And so would you say that community participation is about at the same rate as it was then? Or uh, I think community, community participation with our school boards and local government and so on is as is good as any state in the nation. Mm. And uh, as, as, <clears throat> as far as legislators are, are concerned, uh, many of the, the, the way to run for a house seat, for instance, door to door, now nothing can, can be more representative in getting out there than that. So I, I, I commend the state of Vermont that uh, probably as much as any other state or more than any other state that, that doesn't depend on the party strength, but depends on going door to door and talking to people. And that's the strength of Vermont, and I and I salute the, uh, particularly this house members who have, who, who, to win, have to go door to door. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and that's. I know the people they're going to represent. Humbling, I bet. It is humbling. Oh. But it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Are there some other people in your legislative experience that you think exemplify the characteristics of Vermonters that you think give the endurance to the state and. Yeah the constitutional concepts? Yeah, r rather than pick out individuals, I would just say that the Vermont legislature and, and traveling around the, the nation uh, over the years to many different states, uh, I think our legislators are, uh, work hard, they get out there, they see the people, they, they show up at meetings. And uh, so I'm, I think that's why I, I think that uh, we have one, Vermont has one of the best legislators in the, in the nation, I've always said that. Mm. And you think it's because of the, the f physical going into the communities and discussing stuff in the, in with the, the towns? Yes, in Vermont you're expected to show up. Huh. If you don't show up, then you may lose your seat. Yeah, I bet that's true. Are there little sayings like that for legislators? like? If you don't show up, you'll lose your seat. Well, I think it goes unsaid. <laughs> oh, well, and that's a good thing. You understand that without saying, having it said. Right? Yeah, I bet that's true. Um, famous favorite Vermonters? Well, the, uh, I think, the, I would say is in general, the people who've served us as governors have invariably served in the legislature. Mm -hmm. And I think that I would stack up our Vermont governors against any other group of governors over, you know, a 200-year period. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm, I, I throw a, a bouquet and, and, and give credit to the, our, our governors and I give credit to the people who service, that, uh, who service in, this, in the Senate and the House. And it's, a, it's an outstanding legislature and the uh, um, our governors have distinguished themselves. So I, well, one I remember is Robin Roberts. Yes. Right, who was a Hall of Baseball Hall of Famer from yes. Vermont, right? And then another one was our courageous and very quiet Calvin Coolidge. Silent Cal. Silent Cal, who is a fabulous. Uh, Vermont character and representative and that he really was um, morally sound due to you know his upbringing I think in central Vermont. He said it's something that uh, if something is, goes wrong um, <clears throat> in this nation of Vermont there's more than people in any other state would, would find ways to solve that problem. That's the stores of Vermont would keep them safe, right? Yes, the stores of Vermont Something would, like would, would keep Vermont on the right track. And another character I wanted to bring up was, is Abby Maria Hemingway, who was a like-minded historian to yourself. Yes, and she, 
she, she ran for office. She had virtually no money, but she went, uh, when she went everywhere. She was a brilliant person, and, uh, and that's why, as, as a out, very outstanding uh, uh, public servant, uh, I, put, I, I put her in the book because of, of her outstanding writing and, uh, and her performance in office. But she was, uh, she went town to town and collected information on the different individuals, right, in each town? She knew, she knew her town, and, and I think I would, I would, on that score, I think that our representatives, uh, particularly the House members, because they're closer to the people than senators are, uh, they, they, they're ex our legislators are, are exceptional people who do their do do their homework, uh -huh. and that's why I'd, I would rank again the Vermont legislature way up there, and as you take a look at the other forty nine states. So, a lasting impression by Bill Doyle and Sophie Bettman Carson here, printed by Leahy Press in two thousand eighteen. I guess it was printed yeah. this year. And, and many thanks to Chris Sophie Kirsten. She asked, asked the good questions. And Aww. Former, I will I have to add, disclose it. One of the uh, star students said it was good <laughs> having you in class. I loved being in your class, Bill. It was fabulous. Yeah. And I have to thank you for doing your homework and studying and learning about all these wonderful people who you've brought to the forefront and that we as Vermonters need to embody their energy and foresight and continue the struggle for solid moral ground in this beautiful state, huh? Well, I simply have to and add to what you said, which you said very well, is to pay tribute to the Onion River Community Access, who's, who's done a phenomenal job in the state of Vermont, and uh, we can be, we should, say uh, has, has improved the quality of, of discourse in Vermont because of the wonderful programs that they have. I agree with you 110%. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you, Bill. Best of wishes now. Yes. Just keep up your good work. Bye, Bill's book.